What is going on everybody on YouTube? Max Rock here with a brand new video. And today we're gonna to be doing the full review for the Blue Vivo 11. Now at first glance, looking at the device here, you can see that it, uh, it's a pretty good looking blue phone. It's unlike any other blue phone that they made in the past here. It has a very, very nice build to it. We're looking at three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs in internal storage, a Helio P22 for the uh, CPU. It's clocked at two gigahertz. It's an octa-core processor. We have a, uh, a 19 by nine aspect ratio that you can adjust and put it to 18 by nine, which is a cool little feature there. 3000 mAh battery with quick charge. Android 8.0 or Android 8.1 Oreo with security passage live 2018. 16 megapixel uh, regular camera in the back of the phone. You get a five megapixel depth sensor. And you also get an LED flash. You get a fingerprint scanner, some blue logo in here. On the front of the device, you get your 16 megapixel selfie camera. And uh, the screen itself is 720 by 1520 pixels. So it's a, uh, it's a very, you know, it's a decently um, resolution screen. On the right side of the device, you get your power button and your volume up and down keys. On the left side, you get your SIM tray slot where you can expand your storage. You put a micro SD card in there and uh, adapt it as internal storage. Under the bottom of the device, you get a uh, micro USB for your charging port. You also get a loudspeaker and a microphone there. The first thing I can say about this device here is that the screen looks really, really good. Uh, the resolution of it is perfectly fine for me. I'm lo I love watching videos with it. The cameras on this device are actually really, really good. When it comes to taking, uh, you know, macro shots or anything like that, like, you know, regular daylight shots, using HDR, things like that, the camera does a really, really, really good job. The only negatives that I'll say about it is that it doesn't have 1080p 60 frames per second and doesn't shoot in 4K. Uh, the portrait mode in this device here is really good. I actually took a, uh, a portrait shot here of some, uh, you know, some uh, some stuff in here, as you can see. You know, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. The black, the backgrounds are blurred out and they did a really good job of it there. So I was pretty impressed. The camera does pretty good in low light as well. It's not gonna be like a flagship phone, so don't get me confused with that there. Do not get me confused with that, but it does perform pretty well in low light conditions. With the three gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage, I'll say navigating through the OS and the UI here is not a problem. You won't have any type of issues bouncing back from app to app. Now you may experience uh, some type of uh, you know reload here or there, but nothing that you wouldn't expect. Overall performance though, I like it. I don't have many problems with it. I don't really experience too much lag as well. When it comes to battery life here, this device will give you a full days of battery, no problem, no matter what you're doing. Now it does depend on you know how high you have your brightness and what type of things you have on on the device here, Bluetooth, location, things like that. It will like drain the battery a little bit faster, but for the most part, the battery does last all day. And I have instances where I've used the phone all day, played music, you know, made phone calls, all that, and I still get home with about 45 to 50 percent battery life. It does have quick charge, I believe 1.0. You know, it's not the fastest charge in the world, but it is a little, it is faster than standard charging, so I do appreciate that. The fingerprint scanner in the back is pretty fast. It's not as fast as the Huawei Mate SE, but you know, nonetheless, it gets the job done. The headphone jack on the device is really good as well. But I really noticed the difference between what a good one sounds like and what a bad one sounds like. And then when I say good, I don't mean like hi-fi or anything like that. I mean like you can tell the difference between one to the next. Because I have a lot of phones plug my headphones into every single one of them because I don't have a phone that doesn't have a headphone jack. All my phones have headphone jacks and you can tell which ones can play the music a little bit louder and more crisp. And this is one of them. Data connectivity with this phone here is no problem. I'm using Simple Mobile right now. In case you don't know, Simple Mobile uses T-Mobile's network and the phone will work on T-Mobile and AT&T carriers like that or GSM. But when it comes to Sprint and Verizon, it's not gonna work. Making calls is no problem. People hear me, no problem. I can send text messages back and forth, no issues. Never had an issue with that. Uh, data connectivity is no problem as well. Um, I get uploads of about 30 megabits down, sometimes uh, 10 to 15 up. When it comes to connecting the Wi-Fi here, you do get the option to use the five gigahertz network. If I had anything bad to say about this device here, one thing I would say is that I don't like the fact that the micro USB charging port is like flipped upside down. And on top of that, I don't like the fact that it has a micro USB charging port, period. Just to get it out the way here, yes, this phone is a part of the notch community here. It does have a notch, but um, I've personally been able to get used to it. I think that's pretty much all I want to cover with this device here. 
But if I miss anything and you want me to cover it, let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to like the video if you haven't liked it already. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And if you do decide to subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so that any time a video is posted in the future, you'll be notified of it immediately. But until then, my name is Max Rock. Thank you for watching this video, and you have a good day. Deuces.